Hi, my name is Catherine Batchelor. Have you guys ever felt like you were drowning in your own thoughts or feelings? That's what people with generalized anxiety disorder feel like all day, every day. The anxiety of GAD is diffused and longer lasting, making normal life difficult and relaxation almost impossible. The size of your worry or concern doesn't matter. And nobody can tell you to just stop thinking. It just keeps going and going in your head. From my personal experience, I will say that all these things I mention are true, and they're not a joke. Now let's look at all the pieces to this puzzle. My goal is not to freak you guys out, but to show you the causes, symptoms, and treatment of generalized anxiety disorder. There are many causes that can contribute to having GAD. There is no singular cause or risk factor. Usually many people have multiple different causes that come into play. Will Meek, PhD, is Director of Counseling and Psychological Services at Brown University and has been in university counseling leadership since 2008. He says, some of the common factors include things like genetic predisposition, brain chemistry, family background, social influence, and life experience. You cannot control your genetics or when you were born, and you definitely cannot control life around you. Natasha Tracy, an award-winning writer on mental health issues, she focuses more on the neurological side of things. She says that using a functional MRI scan, it was shown that people with GAD have greater activation in certain regions of the brain when confronted with situations to which an average person would not react with anxiety. I feel like both brain chemistry and family background plays a huge influence to having GAD. Multiple family members of mine on both sides of my family have GAD or some other form of anxiety. There's been many studies done over the years about factors that you can control, however. Meek also says that relying on caffeine, such as coffee, tea, soda, or energy drinks, can make people feel restless and even more anxious. Dangerous and fearful experiences within intimate relationships, career and work-related stress, and use of social media in excessive amounts can greatly impact our mental health, resulting in both anxiety and depression. And all these factors are controllable. If you just limited your caffeine intake or your social media intake, and among other things, it could greatly help. Many people are finding out that they have generalized anxiety disorder by looking at all the signs and symptoms that they see in their daily lives. A person can have a multitude of symptoms for diagnosis. Many people experience them daily and uncontrollably. And anxiety, worry, or physical symptoms create distress in life. And there are, like I said, a very large amount. The Mayo Clinic says that overthinking plans and solution to all possible worst case outcomes, perceiving situations and events as threatening even when they are not, difficulty handling uncertainty, indecisiveness or fear of making the wrong decision, and the inability to let go or set aside a worry are just a few of the leading and most common symptoms. Irrational is a word that comes to my mind and most people with GAD have out of proportion worrying and every thought and emotion is heightened. Some physical signs that you may see can include fatigue, trouble sleeping, muscle tension or muscle aches, trembling, feeling twitchy, nervousness, being easily startled, sweating, nausea, and irritability. All of these symptoms cause me and millions of other people daily and mental physical stress. It feels like a constant loop going through your head, and once you start thinking about a particular thing, something just goes off, and you can't stop thinking at all. Diagnosing for GAD is a difficult task. Dr. Bradley Gillespie says that it's critical to note that many of the symptoms of GAD overlap with the symptoms of depression as well. It complicates the diagnosis. And only 45% of anxiety disorders are not properly identified and often mis misdiagnosed due to somatic complaints. Steve Bresser, who is a retired professor and clinician, he says that it's more common in women than in men and it occurs in relatives of the affected people. And it's diagnosed when someone spends at least six months with excessive worrying about several daily problems. And with all this criteria to follow, it could be very hard and incredibly difficult for professionals. It's hard to tell if people are being for real or not, or if they're just making this all up. 
So you can see that generalized anxiety disorder will not go away on its own. And left untreated, it can't get worse. Having this disorder is a daily challenge for me. But I have started trying different ways for relieving the continuous struggle. There's many treatment options and interventions. And no matter who you are, you can find something that helps. Psychotherapy or going to see a counselor or psychiatrist once or multiple times a week can greatly help with anxiety levels. And the Mayo Clinic says that cognitive behavioral therapy is one of the most effective forms of psychotherapy. When CBT does, it, it focuses on teaching you specific skills to directly manage your worries so that you can gradually return to activities that you stopped doing because of your anxiety. And the other common alternative to help with anxiety levels is medication. Anti-anxiety medications are potent, and although they begin to work immediately, they shouldn't be relied on for long-term relief. And antidepressants also may be helpful in treatment of GAD, but they can take several weeks to start working. I take both anti-anxiety and anti-depression medicine, and it works well. And I also go see a psychiatrist once a week. Antidepressants, including medications in the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor and serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor classes, are the first-line medication treatments. And depending on the severity, your doctor may recommend other types or stronger types of medications. And this may seem like a lot, but like I mentioned earlier, there isn't a one-size-fits-all kind of solution. And people have different ways of trying to handle their anxiety. To sum things up, Generalized anxiety disorder involves excessive worrying thoughts and emotions over a long period of time. And there are many controllable and non-controllable causes that someone may encounter in a lifetime, leading to GAD. There are many identifiable symptoms and ways to diagnose a patient who might have GAD. And it won't go away by itself. It requires you to seek help by talking with a friend, a counselor, a, psychi a psychiatrist, or a counselor getting medication to reduce the symptoms or try to put ease into your life. Lastly, anxiety is like a clock, always working and never stopping, going on and on. Having anxiety myself, I think that's what it feels like. The thoughts and emotions are always in my head and the worries constantly keep me up at night or distracted during the day. I push through it along with millions of other people and it's not easy. Anxiety does throw a lot of challenges at you, but with figuring out your symptoms, what could have caused it, and finding the right treatment, it will change your life. And after five years, I finally decided to talk to my family about it, and it was really scary, but it was worth it. Thank you, guys.